Hey y'all, my name is Summer. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna show you how I wash my hair and do a braid out. I like to start by assessing my hair for oiliness, dryness, matted sections, buildup, and breakage to see what I need to focus on during my routine. So my hair wasn't very tangled and it was bouncy, but it was dry probably because I hadn't been using a sealant with my moisturizer. Starting by creating my first section and then I'm gonna dampen it with some water and start finger detangling. I'm making sure all my hair is wet so that my hair is more receptive to the product. So the products that I'm using today are from Gilgal's Pagoda. It's my mommy's company and it's all I use. The formula that she uses gives it a nice slip. She also uses ingredients that you can actually pronounce. It's a very quality brand. Okay, next you're gonna use a comb to start detangling your ends. I'm using a rat tail comb right now, but I think I'm gonna try something new soon. I'm saying seamless because some plastic combs and brushes have rough edges that could cause breakage to your hair. Taking a brush that is good for your hair, you're gonna finish detangling each section of the section. I know it looks easy y'all, but don't be fooled. I removed a lot and you're seeing the satisfying part. <laughs> the products smell really good. The co-wash and the leave-in in particular have this tropical coconut-like smell. You gonna smell so good just because of your hair and it lasts for days. And once you finish that section, you're gonna put it away and then just repeat the first seven steps until you finish your whole head. I'm not as focused on the scalp during the conditioning process because I know I'm gonna shampoo that area anyway and I just prefer to use conditioner mainly on the hair itself. Now, anybody can use these products, but I will say, I feel like they're especially good for people with thick curly hair because the products are packed with moisture and nutrients. So I like to trim my damaged ends along the way as necessary. If you are comfortable with doing this, make sure you're using sharp scissors because if you don't, you could make the problem worse and cause more damage to your hair. So many of us know that wash days are literal days. They can be really long. So I would encourage you to find something you enjoy doing while you wash your hair. Some people like to watch a show. I personally like to listen to music, but you could also talk to someone on the phone, listen to a podcast or an audiobook. That way you are keeping yourself interested throughout the process. So once I reach the end of the conditioning phase, I like to apply conditioner to the areas without product, the parts that are closer to the root. While I let the product sit in my hair, I decided to style it. And at this point, I was wishing I had neatly parted my hair down the middle, but it's okay. It was still cute and I wasn't going nowhere. So now it is time to shampoo. 
and you're going to massage the shampoo into your scalp with your fingertips. So I'm using the Gilgals Pagoda shampoo. It is rosemary lavender herbal shampoo. It smells like just that, really good, and it gives this cooling sensation to your scalp when you apply it. Don't get it in your eyes though. <laughs> My personal recommendation is to start with hot water to open your follicles and pores to make sure that the product is getting into your hair and then finish with cold water so that you can seal it shut. My hair and my scalp always feel so refreshed and clean after I use this shampoo. Done with shampooing, so we're gonna apply our moisturizing product and I'm using the leave-in conditioner by Gilgal's Pagoda. And I'm gonna seal each section with some jojoba oil to lock it in. I was running low on the oil, so I didn't use as much as I wanted to. Just make sure you cover each section so that you can tell there's more of a slip on top of your moisturizer, but it doesn't have to be an excess amount of oil. Your hair is already going to be very moisturized. If I'm not mistaken, there is oil in the leave-in conditioner as well. From there, I like to part my hair down the middle. My arms were getting so tired, parting and conditioning. It was just a lot, y'all. If you can split your wash day into a couple days, I would recommend you do that to make it easier on yourself. Once it's split down the middle, I put one half away, then I part my first braid section. So to braid, you split your parted section into three and then you intertwine them like this. If it helps you to speak it, think left over middle, right over middle, left over middle, right over middle, over and over until you get to the end. Continue to part and braid, then you're going to mirror the parting that you did on the first side on the other side. Let me also take this opportunity to put you on to this mirror that has changed my parting game. It makes it so much easier to do your hair. My big mirror is behind me, and so I'm looking through this mirror to see the back of my head. The three-part mirror also has a light on it. I just don't tend to use it because you have to charge it and I just forget to charge it. But that is also a good resource. So I'll link this below so that you can take advantage of it as well. Be mindful of the areas of your hair that are drying as you work on other parts and reapply water and moisturizer as necessary. I really enjoy watching myself part in fast motion. <laughs> it's satisfying. Take every chance you wash your hair to get to know your hair a little better. Over time, I've noticed that the middle back part of my hair has a thicker texture than the other parts, and so it does require more product there. So right here, I'm noticing that some of my braids are thinner towards the bottom, and I'm gonna monitor that to make sure that I'm retaining not only length, but thickness as well. Well, maybe not. <laughs> I would definitely recommend doing your protective style the next day, because chances are washing your hair took enough time on its own. So this is the next day, I did have to go somewhere. So what I did is I put that right section into three braids and I pulled it back in a ponytail under a hat. So that worked for me. 
It wasn't very noticeable that my hair wasn't completely braided. Ran out of leave-in conditioner, so I decided to go in with the co-wash again, which has mostly the same ingredients as the leave-in. It's just that it's more concentrated, so I didn't use as much. This is the completed protective style. I really loved wearing them actually more than the braid out itself. They were super moisturized, they were bouncy, they were plump, and I just felt so free and cute. <laughs> I always feel really proud of myself when I finish a protective style because it takes just time and patience and precision. Let me warn you to set aside time to take these out because it took me about 45 minutes. Because I've waited so long to take them out and allowed it to kind of frizz and start getting tangled, it didn't have as much definition as I would have liked to see, but it was still cute. It just wasn't much different from my natural hair texture. So I wound up pulling it back. It's simple, but your pony is gonna be so much fluffier and it's easier to slick your hair because it's stretched. I would love to know if you prefer braid outs or twist outs. And if you'd like to see me do a twist out, I'll probably do one anyway. But <laughs> if you like this video, please give me a like. And if you wanna see more, you know what to do. Thanks for being here and have a great one. See you in the next one. Bye, y'all. Love. Love.